Welcome to the KOR, Kingdom Outreach Radio, with Pastor Charles Littlejohn of Kingdom Outreach Ministries. Amen. Let's declare how great our Lord is today. He is truly worthy of all of our praises. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I tell you, our God is an amazing God. Let's, uh, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you, God, uh, for just a, a great uh, cloud of witnesses today. Father, I pray, God, Lord, that you will uh, lead it the way you want to lead us today. Father God, I thank you for uh, everybody that participated today, God, in setting up the, the service and setting in, in the, the guys that you're using to sing and the guy that you use to do the music, the guy that you use to preach, the, the people that you use to come to smile, or the intercessor pray, prayers and the, the, the committed with the prayer and coming to pray, God. Father, we, we're just thankful today. Father God, on a day, Lord, that we want to set the, sta set the stage to say, Lord, we, we realize, Lord, that you're with us. And God, today I pray, God, Lord, that you will uh, give us a, a, a time of peace, a time of great understanding, a time of great submission. Father God, I pray that every head, every head knowledge will be released in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, God, Lord, that everything that will try to make us where we can't see or can't hear what you want to say to us, Father. Father, I pray today, Lord, that you will give us a freedom, a freedom to hear. Father God, use, use me today, God. Father God, Lord, you created in me a clean heart. And God, you will continue to create those heart cleanses. Father, I pray that you will give me, God, the decrease that you may increase. Give me, God, Lord, the ability to decrease today and not be led by feelings, but be led by faith. But, God, let me be courageous in battle. Father, God, today I pray for an anointing to break every yoke. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, take over this place. Father God, Lord, there's a seriousness, God, Lord, that the culture wants us not to announce. Father God, blow the trumpet today. Blow the trumpet of recognition and releasing today that we may hear the sound of the kingdom. That we may hear the sound of the believers going forward. Father, we love you today. And thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Today we want to go right into the word of God. Uh, we'll be coming from Judges. The 11, we actually, uh, just ask, let God lead us today. Judges 11 and Judges 12. Uh, Releasing and recognizing the shibboleth of the kingdom. Releasing and recognizing the shibboleth of the kingdom. I know there's a word that I just said, shibboleth, that sounds not really like, don't really sound like an a, a everyday word that we use, and uh, it's not. But the word shibboleth, and they use it in the word, and it means in any custom or tradition, particularly a speech pattern that distinguishes a group or people. Any custom or tradition, particularly a speech pattern that distinguishes a group, a people. Shibboleth. Everybody say shibboleth. Shibboleth. <laughs> We're going to have everybody speaking in tongues today. Everybody. Laugh about that one. <laughs> Amen. Shibboleth. Uh, one of the things I want God to do in the, means, in the midst of us is break down walls that keep us from growing. And it's kind of tricky because it, it's an individual thing. and You can't really mesh and press into individuals because God has to do that. But as a leader, as a watchman, 
I get the, I get the job, the shepherd job. I used to say the poop job. That's what shepherds do. I'm telling you that it's not a good, it's not a like a real clean job, because you feelings all over the place. Yeah, you say something, make somebody mad, they, they own you. Got feelings. I'm telling you, it's, a, it's not a, it's not a desirable job. But our culture has made it quite desirable. But it's not that desirable. When it's done right, it's not that desirable. Because who wants to, you know, see this? Who wants to I always have to go through this stuff? But God calls us to. So that's why we do. So, Shibboleth. I want to make sure we get this understanding. And it's, it's a custom or tradition, you know, or a particular or, or a pattern of speech that distinguishes a group of people. Is that, is that pretty clear? I'm going to go slow today if that's all right. I feel like God's want me to go slow, and I, I don't know how he want to do it, but I know he wants me to go slow. Because it's so easy just to go fast over this. Can't. Not, not today. It's got to go slow because this is, this is gonna, it's going to take several meals to get this. I mean, you're going to cook this thing up all week long because you, you, you might taste some stuff today. You're like, man, that, that's a little bitter. Let me go home and, and season this up with a little bit of prayer. And a little bit of pressing in and letting God kind of show me what this seasoning is. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take some time to get this. Now, let's, uh, uh, first of all, uh, I'm looking at Judges uh, 11. And, you know, I don't want to have to read the whole Judges 11. I'm going to explain some of this. And we're going to, uh, Judges 12, I want to tap into reading and some of that. But Judges 11 is, is very particular. Jephthah. You know, everybody say Jephthah. Now, this young man here is an amazing story. He's the son of a prostitute. His dad, Gillen, is a great fighter, great warrior. But his mom is a prostitute. He had a bunch, he had a bunch of brothers. And they got upset. You know how those family things happen. People hold grudges in families. People tend to think one Son is better than the other, and they were fussing and all types of different things because he was the son of a prostitute, and he wasn't, you know, from it wasn't from the same mom. You know how it was? It was a different breed. They was thinking, so they basically told him, "Look, you ain't getting none of the inheritance." So Jephthah, he went to a place. Everybody say Tob. Very interesting place. It actually means mine or me. Everybody say the land of me. The land of me. Oh, boy, boy, boy. So he gets confused, get upset at the family. The family said you're a son of a prostitute and you can't get the inheritance. So he runs to. Nah. I don't know why I keep on calling it Nah, but Todd. He runs to a place of me. It, it, it translated as mine. Hmm. Interesting. So he stays in this place for a little while. And all of a sudden now the Amorites, they come in to fight against the people. And guess what the family did? The family comes back and says, hey, Jeff, we know you're a great warrior. We want you to come and lead us so we can win this war. And Jeff, he did that. He went back and he said, you know, well, okay, I went back. Ain't that something how family and the divisions and different things uh, kind of come in and try to take your mind off of victory, to take your mind off of what God has done in your life? And I, I look at, I'm looking at him and I'm thinking about his success story, but I'm thinking about at, at, at the great success story. He has some greater other stories that don't seem like success. But the whole issue I'm looking at, at when I look at him, Great warrior goes to a place of me, go to the land of me for a while because he got a little disgruntled with his family, got a little messed up because people didn't want to receive him, got a little rejected because people kicked him out of this, kicked him out of that, so he feels, feels a little rejected. So now he's in this war. He sends a letter to the king. He said, look, the king, he said, the king, why are you fighting us? The king said, we're fighting you because you did this. Because when, when children of Israel came through, that you did this and you did that, all, everybody say, he say stuff. He say, she say. 
he say she say stuff he was talking about. That's what he was talking about. Stuff that happened way back then that wasn't even the truth. He said it. So Jephthah, he tried his best to, to stay away from war. He tried to stay away. But guess what? The man wouldn't listen. So he went in, did what he needed to do. But did, he did something before that. He made a vow. I, you know what? This is a very controversial thing. Because he made a vow. God, if you bring victory to our family, I will sacrifice the first thing that comes through my door. If you give victory to my family, I'll sacrifice the first thing that comes through my door. Listen, God knows what he's doing. I look at that, and from my mentality, I can, boy, I can think of a whole lot of ways. Why do you do that, man? Who do you think was going to be in your house, man? I can, it's a lot of stuff in my mind I could think. Why would he make a vow such as this? But God is showing me something about the death process. It's something about death. You can't judge death. You can't judge it. What does that mean? You don't, I don't know what death is in your life. So I can't judge this man because he said, Lord, I'm going to make a vow. And the first thing that comes out my door, I'm going to sacrifice to you. To him, there is no more sold out to the kingdom of God. There is no greater shibboleth than that. I'm committed to sacrifice anything. There's nothing above God. Boy, that's, that's pretty significant. So guess what happens? He goes to the house. He comes back from this great defeat. And here comes his daughter. The first child, his only child, comes out the door to greet dad with a big old smile. Instantly, he said, oh, he ripped his clothes. He took everything off. I said, Lord, he said, God, you made me. He said, he told his daughter, you made me very weak today. Because he, he said, I made a vow that I have to keep. She said, what is it? She said, Dad, will you just give me two months to go with my friends? I thought about that. Boy, teenagers, I mean, young people still, boy, it was still the same back then, wasn't it? She said, you give me two months to go. And I mean, even in this, man, she's going to die. But she said, give me two months. To go, I'm not going to marry. She's a virgin. So she gave me two months to go in the hills and, and, and celebrate and, and talk to my friends because I'm not going to marry and, and just be with my friends for two months. He did it. He said yes. When she comes back, he does what he said he's going to do. He sacrificed his daughter for God. Now, what I just did, I just kind of went over in story in chapter 11. But what I want you to do is we're going to like we're going to read that this week, 11 and 12. So I'm storying right now. Story means I'm perfect. I'm just going and I'm telling the story. But there's a lot of points in the story that God's going to develop you. See, right now, there, there, there has to be a deeper wanting, because if this man Jephthah was able to sacrifice everything in this house, why can't I sacrifice to get in the word of God? I can't do this. I can't do that. I got this. I got that. Everything comes up before it. And it's so easy to feel like, oh, well, God, he understands. By the way, he loves me. <laughs> he loves me. So he understands. So that, that takes us to a place where he's now, he, he, he defeated this place. And, and now it really puts us in a place of him defeated. And he did all that. And now it takes us to chapter 12, which is a whole, man, this is, this is theater at its finest. Because his brothers, who he tried to get to help him, to fight against Amnon, got mad, Calvin, because he went and fought against the Amorites, the family's enemies. Got a common enemy there. Everybody say a common enemy. Common enemy. That's a common enemy there. And he went and fought. But they got mad because they didn't, he didn't take them. 
So now we got a, a real deep conflict between the Ephraimites and remember these are these are all these guys are close cousins because they're children of Joshua. I'm not Joshua, excuse me, Joseph, excuse me. The children. So they're, the, they're, they're part of the 12 tribes. So these people are close cousins, close brothers. These people are family. Everybody say they're family. They're family. So now they're in, they're in the bunch. You know, I mean, they're in the bunch. And we're at chapter 12, and now we can read the word from chapter 12. Somebody want to want to read it? I will. Sure. Judges 12. And the men from Ephraim, Ephraim gathered themselves together and went northward and said unto Jephthah, Wherefore pass thou over to fight against the children of Amnon and did not call us with thee to go with thee? We will burn thine house upon thee with fire. Good God, they're going to burn their house. Burn his house down. And Jephthah said unto them, I and my people were at great strife with the, with the children of Amnon. And when I called you, you delivered me not out of their hands. And when I saw that, they, that ye delivered me not, what did he do? I put my life in my own hands. Good God. Oh my. And passed over the children of Ammon, and the Lord delivered them into my hand. Wherefore, then are ye come unto me this day and fight against me? Then Jephthah gathered together all of the men of Gilead and fought with Ephraim. And the men of Gilead smote Ephraim because they said, Ye Gileadites, are fugitives of Ephraim among the Ephraimites so, and among the Menasites. I'm, so I'm, I'm going I'm to stop right there just kind of get. So, so now what's going on now is the family got mad. Now there's name calling. They know about what's going on. All that what they're saying now is they're fugitives, and they're I would call them refugees, heaven refugees. I mean, we'll, we'll get into some of that a little bit later. They, they're basically there are uh, va uh, vagabonds of the land. You're going to go to that place of mine, of top, and you're going to be over there with all the criminals, all the other thieves, and you're going to come and you're going to act like you're something. You know how it is. Once you start addressing some areas, I, I like the little term, once you start smashing some teacups in your own life, you know what's going to happen? You're going to get, you're going to get, people around you are going to see it and you're going to get rejected. You're going to get some, say it again, brother. There's going to be some blowback. And this is what happened. The Ephraim, I was like, wait a minute. They said, we're going to come. We're going to burn your house down. You're going to do this. And it made him mad. And all of a sudden now, he said, you know, and now, now he goes into the place. He's getting ready to fight. Well, I, I'm, am I getting ahead? Hold on. It's a place. Back up two sentences. Okay. And then Jephthah, verse 4. Yes. Then Jephthah gathered together all the men of Gilead and fought with Ephraim. And the men of Gilead smote Ephraim because they said, You Gileadites are fugitives right there. of Ephraim among the Ephraimites and among the Manasites. Name calling. Yeah. Name blaming. Stone slinging. Mm -hmm. Just, just all they're doing. Just, just throwing stone. Not calling names. Really going and say, Look, you guys are fugitives. Who you think you are? And this right here up, it, it uprooted a war. Now something get ready to go on. Mm -hmm. Keep going. And the Gileadites took the passages of Jordan before the Ephraimites, and it was so that when the Ephraimites, which were escaped, said, Let me go over, that the men of Gilead said unto him, Art thou an Ephraimite? If he said nay, if he said nay, then said they unto him, Show, say now, Sibboleth. Shibboleth. And he said, <laughs> Sibboleth. Wow, ain't that something? For he could not frame to pronounce it right. Right there. So the pronunciation was gonna was gonna give and gonna re, it was gonna reveal the everybody say the sound. The sound was going to reveal mm -hmm. the culture. The sound is gonna reveal the culture. So you, you, it can't be revealed of, of, only through the sound. Why? Because the, they're all brothers. They're all brothers. Everybody looked alike. So they go, well, see what I love about it is this. Uh, Jeff, he was smooth. I like, I love a warrior. He goes, when it comes, he goes to all the fords. I mean, all the bridges. 
Everybody say all the bridges. bridges. He went and took all the bridges hostage. That means every event, everything that the enemy had access to come over into his life, he took it hostage. He said, I'm going to go in, I'm going to battle those things that's coming at me, that's bring me to this place. I'm going to take it hostage. He went to every ford around Jordan and he took, he, he, he took the bridges hostage. Now, see, when that get cut off, when that, when that comfort gets cut off, now you're going to see some things start to happen. When the death process starts happening in our life, we're going to see some things start to happen. When we can cut some things and cut some areas, some fords, and, and take hostage some things mm-hmm. that's trying to keep us in the same teacup mentality. The teacup mentality is a mentality of normal living. Normal. Same thing. Normal. Same thing. Over and over and over and over to a beat of the same thing. A cycle. A sound of sibilant. So we got them there. And they're protecting the fords the, or the dams or the bridges. And all of a sudden what happens now? Every time an Ephraimite would come to try to get across they had to prove their culture. What happened to them? So he said, and, and what I love about it is this, he says, because if, if we, we say shibboleth, we know they're getting it out. We know who they, they're, they're a part of. Family. Guess why? Because your culture is going to, you're going to pronounce by your life the culture that you're connected to. So I can, you can be my brother, you can be my wife, you can be my husband, you can be whatever, you can be connected. But guess what? The sound that's coming out your life is going to show where you're connected to. Amen. There's a sound. Yeah. And it does bring divisions in the families. Oh, we better talk about it. It's going to bring division. And there's going to be a, 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 an anonymity. There's going to be, a, 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 when I say anonymity, that means it's going to be hostility. That's going to be a, a, a division that Satan will come and try to bring that. Even with Monk's family, a division. Mm-hmm. Think about this. So the ones that said sibilant, S-I, look, let's, let's look at this. God, show me this. Look at this. The difference between sh and s. That was the difference. That was the difference. That was the difference. Do you see how close that is? If my brothers, if we living with people and we living and we're going forward, it's so easy for Satan to come in and bring divisions amongst our own house, amongst our own places, amongst our own stuff and the shibboleth. And the shibboleth means what? It is a group of people with a sound, with a similar pattern of speech, recognizing a group, recognizing kingdom citizen. So there's a kingdom shibboleth that comes out of my voice. I say out my voice, but my voice is not what you see. My voice is what you hear. And you hear it by faith. By faith. It's by faith. That you hear this. You're developing something that you can't see. You can't look at it and say, well, no, I can't depend on the eye gate. I have to learn to depend on faith. Now watch this. So everybody that says sibling, what do they do to them? What do they do? Just finish it up and we'll go. Okay, so, so in verse 7, I'm sorry, in verse 6. And then they took him and slew him at the passages of Jordan. And there fell at that time of the Ephraimites forty and two thousand. And Jephthah judged Israel six years. Then died Jephthah the Gileadite and was buried in one of the cities of Gilead. That's good. All right. So, boy, we got a group of people that was the same. But because their sound 
wasn't this wasn't the sound of the culture, wasn't a part of the family, but they had the same look. They had the same walk. It looked just like it, but the sound was different. And God put in my spirit. There's a kingdom sound. And God wants to develop us to be able to hear the kingdom sound. You know, since 2007, God put in my life, he said, son, preach the kingdom of God. I didn't understand what he meant when he said preach the kingdom of God. I thought I was preaching the kingdom of God. But what I was preaching was, I was preaching religion. Preaching it. Preaching about God, doing all this stuff and going hard as I can. But guess what? God showed me in 2007. He said, you know what, son, I want you to preach the kingdom. As God began to show me how to do this, he broke me down. He took everything that I thought was what it's supposed to be. He broke it down. He gave me something called the death process, the threshing floor. Let's think about Jephthah's life. Look at his life. Son of a prostitute. Goes to a place of war. Todd, what? Me. Well, mine, yeah. But the scripture is Todd. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Todd. But he goes to a place of me. He goes there for a while, and now, now he gets challenged. Now here, here, come, here come God. See, God makes a way. See, listen, I don't care. I don't care where you come from, man. God, man, God. Listen, if God called you to do something, my God, He's gonna He's gonna allow you the access to get it done. It doesn't matter what your past was, Mister Little John. He left out. I was no. It don't matter what your past was. It don't matter what how you was born here. When God got a plan for your life, He's gonna take you through the threshing floor to get you where you need to be. So, man, He took him through a life of death. So Jephthah goes through his life. He comes through. He, he loses his daughter. Boy, tragically, man, that's a powerful man. That's terrible, but it's powerful because it shows something. It's a sound. I want you to see a sound. See, his priority is in the kingdom of God. That sound of the kingdom is going to come through your priority. And I can't make excuses. So guess what? I can't make uh, coming to church a mandate or you ain't saved. But I can make a coming to church and coming with a group of believers a mandate to say the shibboleth that's coming out of your life. I hear it. I hear what you're speaking. I hear it. And God reveals it through our lives. It's not. I can't sit up here and just. Speak, 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 speak. But the kingdom sound, you will hear it without me speaking. You will hear it from my walk. And guess what happens? When you start breaking down death, when you start, everybody say, cutting the bridge of the culture, the, the sibilant culture, it's us, culture in your life. If you start mandating those bridges of stuff that's coming into your life, I don't, know where, I don't know where your bridges are. I don't know what, what has captivated you over the months and years and lifetime. I don't know what the things that you're struggling with. But those bridges that, that the enemy have access to, those things will keep you from operating in a shibboleth, a kingdom shibboleth. It's going to keep you operating in the same type of religious teacup because those bridges are not shut down. Because you're not battling those things in your life. There's some stuff that's coming in, some inroads that's coming in. And Satan, the enemy, got all types of roads coming in. There's some family issues going on. And Satan got, and you keep struggling about that bridge. You got a bridge there. That, that bridge is open. Satan can come on that bridge every time. You, you, ain't, you ain't over. You ain't guarding. You ain't ready. He got access every time. You can come to church. That bridge is still open, though. Boy, you got, he just, we running you down with that bridge. Another area. You got some stuff going on in your marriage. Guess what? It, that bridge is open. You, you're not putting, giving it to God. You got some stuff going on, some issues. Time that, that bridge is wide open. Yeah, you can come to church. You can pray over it. You can shout over it. But the sound of the kingdom is going to allow you to attack in those areas. And you have to understand that the death process, everybody said the death process, is going to put you in a place where you can hear the sound of the kingdom. How, how did they know? If my, if they were brothers and family, man, so they all looked alike. So I could say I'm an Ephraimite and be like, no, you, no, look, man. Say, say something then. Good God Almighty. I'm a believer. Okay. Say something. <laughs> but guess what? It's so easy for me in my life and you in your life to be super hypercritical of other believers. 
But the Bible says, let the wheat and the tear grow together. Even though you want to cut the bridges, there is a, a quality that God is the one that's going to bring in the harvest and divide who's a wheat and who's a tear. But there's a sound that God want to use in our life. I want to let me read something with, with that. Hold on just a second. It says, I thought about the word uh, fugitive. A fugitive is a person who has escaped from a place of hiding, especially avoiding arrest or persecution. That's what they were calling uh, my man, uh, Jeff. He's the, he and all those criminals, or all those people over there in, in the land of me, all those people, they're this or they're that. And they was calling them those fugitives. Another word I want to want to just, just just talk about a little bit: a refugee. That's what God's kind of put something in my spirit about a refugee. You know, we've been seeing some of the things about refugees here. A refugee is a person who has been faced to leave their country in order to escape war and persecution or natural disaster. I thought about the word refugee and the kingdom of God. I, we have dual citizenship. Does everybody know that? Amen. I'm a citizen of the kingdom of God. I'm a citizen of heaven and I'm a citizen of the United States of America. I'm proud of both of them. But my allegiance is to the kingdom of God. Watch this. It's in my dual citizenship, I walk with Jesus. But he gives me what I need to do. He shows me the, the sounds, the things I need to be going for. But there's going to be a time where I've got to deny myself, operate in the death process, and escape. Everybody say mentally escape. And spiritually escape from my country of America. I've got to cut. I'm gonna have to cut some road. I'm gonna have to cut some bridges, cut some inroads. I'm gonna have some. I'm gonna have to sure up some places in my life that I let the king, that I let the culture of America ride right in and get me to operate in the. Wow! I just I just saw a teacup and I saw a sibling. Like, no, 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 you sip, 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 sip it. I know God's funny. I, he's funny with me, man. I'm telling you, I'm sorry. I saw a teacup and sip, sip it. He, he wants us to stay in the same realm. Stay in, you know, if you guys weren't here, we, uh, a couple weeks ago, we looked at the movie, Get looked at a clip of the movie Get Out. And Get Out had a little teacup in it where the, the guy was looking at a teacup and the lady was hypnotizing him and, and put him in a place of just, what was that land? A sunken place. Put him in that sunken place. You know that sunken place where whoop. that's what the culture wants to do to us. That's when we don't allow the when we allow those things to stay the same. And guess what? Every one of us, see, right now it's very easy for us to be religious and think this ain't for me. Now nah, this is for you. Say it's for me, it's for me. It's better be for you, because it's so easy to feel like it's not for you. It's for you. Man, Satan is he's tricky. That sound is for you and me. Boy. I feel that deep in my heart. It's so easy for us to, to be in this situation and oh, the world's for somebody else. I got it. No. You need it. I need it. Amen. Watch this. Amen. I just saw something else. Guys, I don't know. Nemo, good gracious. Y'all got to get this Nemo out of my head, man. I, even those, those little, I don't know what them things were. Flingos or something. Mine, 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 mine. I saw Jeff. That's where he, that, that's where he was. He a bunch of guys together, and they and they went and they and the land of mine, mine, mine. And you want to stay right there, mine, mine, mine. And saw so he was talking about. See, uh, some, if you ain't watch Nemo, you don't know what I'm talking about. But I saw that land of mine. Well, I'm not wanting to die. I don't want to cut this access to some things in my life. I got some entertainment issues. All I do is laugh and play about stuff, and I'm not kingdom minded. I got some issues there. But I want to shout and go to church. I want to do things for God. I want to say I'm a good Christian. 
But I really don't have a desire for God like I need to. I got a lot of other things going on in my life. And a lot of them is I build these walls of excuses all the time. I can make an excuse for everything. Instead of coming to a place of accountability. I just saw, let me stop seeing what I see. I saw a trampoline. And I saw, I say, you got to keep coming to that trampoline. You got to keep coming to that place of accountability. You got to keep coming to that place. You got to keep springing off of it. You got to keep springing off of it. See, the enemy wants to put you in a place where you stuck. But you got to keep springing off accountability. So, so when it is time to die, you'll know I need to die. You won't be sitting around, I don't want to hear it. Um, he got over here, my feelings. Or, 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 or I don't really want to do that. No, you need to hear this. Amen. Because this is what growth comes from. You can't grow if you don't hear this. There's nobody better than anybody in this place. But growth comes from accountability. Growth comes from being faithful and fulfilling the call of God in your life. See, you know what? Ah, I, I tell you. When I when I see this, when I think about this, it's so many. I mean, I pray for me because I struggle. I know God wants me to preach sometimes. But the greatest preaching to be done, it's going to start tomorrow when, a, when we leave here. Because am I really going to sacrifice my beautiful life to get in the word? If Jephthah can sacrifice his whole family, that's what I keep hearing. If he can sacrifice his family, wow. the first person to come out the door, he's like, I'm going to give it to you, God. How, why can't I cut some of these bridges and go chew up some of these inroads that the enemy's trying to come at me with. Lust. Oh, that's where he's coming at me at. Lust. He coming. Boy, it's time when I feel I'm the greatest. Boy, God, thank you, God. I've conquered the mountain of lust. Whoa! And then he beat me down. God, I thought I was over that. I thought I was over it. You know what time is real? I, I, listen, you want to hear nothing real? I mean, maybe, maybe not. Just not for you, and that's okay because they don't have to be for you. It's, it's okay. I'm telling you, it's so easy to feel like, oh, I've conquered it. That's what the stretching floor is about. That's what it's about. I'm not perfect. None of us perfect, but we are purposed, and God's calling us to do some great things. But we gotta be real. We gotta cut some inroads. Got to cut some bridges. You know, so that's the entertainment come. The little videos that come up on you. Get your mind going. Those little things that come up to make it, to get you away from the word. And it might not be sinful. But guess what? If you spend five hours on a video and you, and you ain't spend no time in the word, it's sinful. It's a problem. It's an issue. And guess what happens? You're going to come and try to make the sound of the kingdom. And you're just going to be sipping. Sibyl it. And the enemy uses that to bring divisions in families. Because somebody, see, this, this thing could be either or. Because somebody may be having a sound of the kingdom in, in your family or in your connection or in your oikos. And there may be some that's not. But see, this is why it's so important to let the weak and terror go together. Because it's really... Your business is not re trying to reveal to people so you can expose them. Your vision is that you become what God wants you to be so God can expose people through you. See, it's so easy for me to want to think I got to tell you something. I, that's why I have to be careful because it ain't always for me to be telling you nothing. Sometimes it's for me to let the Holy Spirit use my life to tell you. And there's going to be some time where you say, no, speak. There's going to be time where you can say, no, I got it. Live. Live your life. Live. So, kingdom culture. Now you see, when y'all watch the video, you're going to see what I'm talking about. How right now, there's people in our midst. And we come, we come to church. And this church has created an atmosphere. The church atmosphere creates an atmosphere where that teacup will get us in a place where thinking that I can just live these normal, un- prioritize life and call it a kingdom shibboleth. A shibboleth is 
a group of people with the same pattern, the same speech, producing the faith that pronounces power, producing the faith. Not being so connected to the world, but being to the world disenchanted from the world, but being engaged in the kingdom and God brings forth great fruit in the world. So it don't even look like you're not in the world, but you're really not. You're still in it. It's like it's almost like there's a trickery that goes on with God allows us to be those transformers. You know, those robots in disguise that transform culture. Transform. And I don't have to feel like I got everybody got to know that I'm Optimus Prime. And I'm doing big things. No, no I'm just walking. You, make, you look at me. You call me a fugitive. Call me a vagabond. Call me a refugee. Call, whatever. But guess what? I'm going to walk with Jesus. And guess what? The faith. Of the gospel has got to be in us so we can live a life that's committed and developed in him. That's why it's so important for us to love in war. Love. Because what's this going to do? When, it, when the Bible says love your neighbor as yourself. So I'm not looking at anybody trying to feel like I'm over or above or beneath anybody. But the truth is this. i got to walk in love. Death to self. is the greatest love that we'll ever know. I'm going I'm to... I feel something a little different. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open it up here in a minute. But my, my spirit, I got a couple of things. Some more. Smashing your teacups. Smashing my teacups. That means the natural, normal trances that I go into of religion ex exposes all teacups. So you're going to expect some flack with that. So when you really go into areas where you are, you are you're operating in faith, it's going to bring some dysfunction sometimes. It's going to bring some hostility. And guess what? Even sometimes with your family, with your wives, with your husbands. But guess what? That's not a bad thing. The flesh wants you to feel like that's a bad thing. No, that ain't a bad thing. Because guess why? God wants to use that for his glory. See, the, the, the simple that want everything to be so clean and everything so easy and, and nothing getting stretched and everybody is smiling and everything so good. Boy, look at how good people we are, boy. We got it going on. But the truth is, no. No, no, this is a war. Jephthah, this is a war. Just, he didn't live that long. It was a small portion on this warrior. And he was a warrior. And he brought, he, look what he was born into. Prostitution. Born into, he was born from that sin. But look how God used him. I tell you, God, God got some warriors in this place. Especially these young, a lot of young people. Boy, you're a warrior. I've now, brother, since the first day I ever met you, I knew you were a warrior. I knew it. I said something special about that guy. A warrior. In the spirit. You may not see what I'm talking about. I see it. And I believe God's going to release that into your life. And you're going to be a mighty man of God. Leading people. I've always seen it. And I see it. And I want you to. I want you. Don't forget that fire. You know the fire I'm talking about. That burn within you. It's a fire that's in you. That the enemy has tried its best to put and smash out. Believe what God's saying to you, man. It's a fire, man. It burns. The enemy has tried to smother it out in these last few years. Tried to smother it out. But God's got some great things for you. You ought to see it like never before. And I, I encourage you to press like you never have in this season. In closing, in, in, in a moment. We're going into a holiday season. There's going to be some people, and I know it, Everybody wants to know how you, what you feel about these, some of these pagan worship holidays and different things. We can go up and toss up a whole lot of stuff when it comes to this. But guess what? God showed me something. A holiday, similar, or holy days. There is nothing that God would love more than for his believers to be operating in the shibboleth. That means the king, a kingdom sound. 
in the days that the culture will frame a holiday, but you walk in a holy day. God's called us in this. See, it's so easy for me to feel like, well, I'm let's throw it all away. No. God has called us. It, what was what was the what, what would he what was the prayer in John 17? He said, My prayer is that you don't take them out the world. Don't take them out the world. But my prayer is that you protect them from the evil one. So when I think about holidays, am I going to be going around in the spirit of the holidays? Sibyl? Or can I operate in the spirit of the holy days? Sibyl? Which will allow me to operate within the world's holidays. Holy days. That's what they are. That's what the word means. That's what it's derived from. But see, sometimes it's, it's easy to take that, separate that apart. But really, holy means I'm separated to uh, honoring these days for the king. So Thanksgiving, oh my God, it's an amazing time to celebrate Thanksgiving. Good God Almighty. Boy, I get to be thankful to the king. Oh my God, that I should be doing in days and days to come. And Christmas. What an amazing time that the world that some people who do not believe in Jesus would even think of a day that he was born and they say they don't believe in him. They run around celebrating Jesus. What, what great time is for us to operate in the kingdom. I can't mess it up up here. Somebody help me out. Come on. Shill the ball. Boy, I can't even talk anymore. But you see what I'm saying? But you, you, see, you see how it's so easy to get that mixed up? So you, you can be fighting with your brothers because they're over there with Christmas lights on. Man, shut up, please. You can be fighting with your brother because they got a Christmas tree and the ultimate is hanging on it. And yeah, we know about so I can, I can go through and study a whole bunch of stuff that is evil in some of the things. Guess what? Why can't you, be, why can't you separate as a, holiday, a holy day and stop being mad at people because they're celebrating Jesus? I'm telling you, in, in our brotherhood, there's going to be an easy dysfunction from your mentality. So, let's, so in my spirit today, let God show us today what sound is coming out of me. What sound? What sound? And the sound is not the pronunciation of what on my words, but it's the life of my faith. The life of my faith. How am I walking? Can I really say that I'm willing to sacrifice my life and my family? But there's more rejection than it is connection. And you don't really see the connection. You don't see the rejection. Well, you don't see the rejection because it's spiritually discerned. And that's why, you know, and no, and nobody's coming ready to swing on me. Like, well, yet, not yet. I mean, I've, I mean not yet. I, I'm not going to say that ain't going to happen. But what I'm saying is that the rejection is like enmity, hostility. Who, who do he think he is? He's the son of a prostitute. Who he think he is? Who thinks she is? This mentality. Good God, it, 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 it sticks in families. As soon as the teacup gets smashed, boy, you better believe there's something coming. It's something coming, man. It's something coming, man. It's something coming. When that meteorocracy, that same mundane thing that keeps happening, when that thing gets exposed, it's coming. And that's why we've got to be careful. And that's why it, it, we got the wheat and tear scriptures in the, in the scripture. We're going to go, with, we're going to be sending out a lot of stuff this week. Uh, I really want God, God's going to really show me something in this thing. Because I don't look at today as being the, the full revelation. Today is just like you, you just got a, a snack of fries. You guys are going to go and God's going to prepare, prepare, prepare a meal. You guys are going to go prepare your own meals. God Almighty, you're going to eat. And boy, 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 it's going to be sweet and mighty for the one. Everybody's not going to do that. Let's be real. Some people didn't hear me. Didn't hear him. They're not going to do it. And they're going to make excuses because they didn't do it. That means go hard. It's going to be something not. You're not. But guess what? I want to tell you this. For the ones that will do, 
you will see what God is going to do in your understanding, in everything that you do. You'll see, you'll see greatness. Anybody else? Well, we've got time today. It's good. Amen. And I said earlier, B, see, there's been many, many people have left our, my, our congregation and they don't like the style of preaching sometimes when I come at people. And I've, had, I've heard people tell me this. I feel, I always feel down. Well, they feel like you come at people. Yeah, I feel Flesh. down. Watch this. Watch this. If you practice death, this is nothing because you're going to be you're going to praise God to hear the word of God and hear it coming at you. You won't hear it if you practice, but it's so easy not to practice. It's a spirit that says it's OK to sin. It's not OK to live in sin. Did everybody hear that? Did everybody hear did everybody hear this. It is not OK to live in sin. Are we all creatures and can sin and may sin daily? Yes, but there's no bondage of sin. That's got to be understood real clearly because guess what happens? You walk around in a teacup mentality thinking you have no power or no, you, know, you, you can never conquer anything. You can conquer sin. God's given us the power to conquer sins in our life. We don't have to, we are not under bondage. That's the, that's the danger. That's the danger. And the flesh, well, I don't want to grow. I don't have to. I don't have to. You see, you see how that, that flesh can come in and say, I don't want to grow. No, you've you got to grow. God's given us the ability to have the power to conquer this stuff. And we got to be like warriors going hard. Are we going to be perfect? No. But we got to go hard. And as a leader, as a watchman, I cannot allow God's people to hear something that will bring inroads to them that will give them in a perpetual cycle of torture by sin. The cross, is for, the cross is for that. The cross is I don't have to be tortured by sin. So even though I may fall, it's not. It doesn't have me by handcuff. And I will not glory in no sin. Amen. Can't. Because that's against the power of the cross. And that's why we got to be careful. Because what I hear, what I can hear is sibilant. Instead of shibble it, instead of walking in the power and the authority of God over anything in my life, I can hear, I'm going to numb down because we're all sinners, remember? Remember that? We're all sinners and we're numb down and I'm a sinner, so we're good. That's not, that's not the mentality of the gospel. That's not what God called us to do. He called us to walk by faith that God's going to give us ability to conquer anything. And that's where we got to walk. We got to walk that way. We got to walk that way. It is what it is. Anybody else? I'm starting to look at all the packages of the stuff that we consume. You wouldn't believe us in some of this food we eat. And it's got to be killing us. Faith, walking in faith, trusting God to protect us, like you said earlier, protect us from the things that we don't see. From the stuff that we're going to deal with. Oh, man, we, it's all type of stuff that we're tapping in. We don't, it's a lot of stuff in the, in the rim that we don't see. But having faith in God and walking and not looking at it, uh, anything else, but having faith in God and let him develop it to us. Amen. You know, you know, the culture right now tells us a lot of dead dog things. Like, tells, you know, makes us feel like, you know, things or a certain way or, you know, I got to do this a certain way. And I'll, but God has called us to greatness to bring covenant. God's called us to speak into people's lives, not just at church. See, this gathering, this is a great reflection of what should your scattering should be like. Your scattering should be a, a scattering of self-denial, going into God and, and, and worship. These things bring great blessings in your life. But if you go home and those, those, those bridges and roads are all going to the same thing, you're not battling like the sister was saying there, you're not battling in the spirit. You can come to church and, and you, you could be saying civilly. But guess what? Jephthah, he, they killed those people. Because you see someone and you hear sound coming from someone, it's not your job to kill. It's not your job to attack. 
It's your job to walk and let the Holy Spirit be the attacker and do what he needs to do. And it may be the Holy Spirit may kill it. And he can do what he wants to do. But it's not really my business. But the problem is this. It's easy for me to go right backwards to the teacup and be in a judgmental spirit. Focusing in on everybody else and not allowing God to change me. So we love everybody today. Love everybody. Thank you for listening with us as we enjoy Kingdom Concepts with Pastor Charles Littlejohn of the Kingdom Outreach Ministries. Hi, this is Dina Barnes with our Spreaker station, Remnant Nation Radio, and we're at a new channel today called the KOR Kingdom Outreach Radio with Pastor Charles Littlejohn. You just listened to a program from the KOR. If you would like to contact Pastor Charles Littlejohn, you can go to the KingdomOutreachCenter.com. That's a website, KingdomOutreachCenter.com. And if you'd like to get a hold of me, go to NewWinePouring.com with one W. At the top of any one of the pages you come to is a Contact Us link that if you click on it, it will take you to a correspondence page where I would love to hear from you. If you'd like to send us correspondence, you can send it to David Barnes, Post Office Box 1697, Lincolnton, North Carolina. That's Lincolnton, North Carolina, 28. Oh, nine, three. So, until we meet again, God bless. Thank you for listening to Remnant Nation Radio.